Case Control Studies – Selection and Sources of Cases and Controls By the end of this session, you should be able to Outline the key characteristics of a case control study Assess the importance of case definition, inclusion and exclusion criteria Critically appraise the importance of case and control selection First, let's revisit the key characteristics of a case control study a case control study starts with the identification of a group of cases and a group of controls. A case is the term for an individual with a particular illness or condition. A control is the term for an individual without the illness or condition. Exposures are the different factors, such as smoking or sunlight, to which both groups might have been exposed. We measure the exposure being studied in both the cases and controls. We then calculate the association of the disease with the exposure to see if the cases have been more exposed than the controls. This measure is called the odds ratio. How would a case control design be used to study AMD? In a case control study, we start with individuals with the disease and then investigate the exposure. We have to define specific criteria for inclusion of the cases. For example, are the cases early or late stage? Are they wet or dry? Do we use incident, that's new cases or prevalent cases? Once we have these defined inclusion criteria, we also have to have specific diagnostic criteria for quality control. All of these methods prevents selection bias. Um, a case control study can be either population based, that is, we choose cases from within a subset of the population, or hospital based, in which case cases are chosen from one or more hospitals. In our example of case control studies, let's look at a study of risk factors for neovascular AMD. We'll examine the association between cardiovascular disease and the risk of developing wet AMD. Neovascular or wet AMD affects about 10 to 15% of individuals with AMD and accounts for considerable vision distortion and severe loss of vision. There are a range of possible risk factors for AMD and we need to study them all to see if exposure to any of them is associated with wet AMD. Let's begin with a critical examination of the case selection process in this study. What was the source of the cases? The cases were selected from five large eye care centres in the US. What was the case definition? A case was defined as an individual with wet AMD that fulfilled specific diagnostic criteria. How were the cases identified? Clinic coordinators reviewed patient notes for eligible participants and physicians were asked to refer patients with wet AMD. What were the inclusion criteria? A resident of the local clinic area, aged 55 to 80, diagnosed in the year before enrolment into the study with a visual acuity worse than 6, 6 or distortion on Amsler grid testing and any drusen in either eye and at least one of several specified retinal signs. What were the exclusion criteria? The case must not have choroidal neovascularization associated with any disease other than AMD. Were incident or prevalent cases included? Only incident that's new cases, that were diagnosed in the year prior to study were selected and enrolled into the study. Was case detection, known as ascertainment, independent of exposure status? Yes, all the cases with AMD were enrolled before they were questioned on the exposure. This last point is very important in case control studies as we only select cases on their disease status, not on their exposure. Controls must fulfil the same inclusion and exclusion criteria as the cases, apart from those relating to the disease. As we are studying an eye disease, the cases have the disease, but the controls should not have the same disease or any disease that is related to it. 
Controls can be either hospital-based or population-based. The most important point is that they should be from the same population as the cases. A common rule for choosing cases and controls is hospital cases, hospital controls. When cases of an eye disease, hospital controls could be chosen from the general surgery ward, for example. The disadvantage of hospital controls is that they have health problems and may have a less healthy lifestyle, for example smoking. It is possible to use population controls instead. They are identified from the same local population register. However, in practice, it is often very difficult to recruit population controls. More than one control can be selected for each case. This is useful when cases are rare, as it gives the same statistical precision for a smaller number of cases. The rule is a maximum of five controls per case. Having more than this will not give any additional advantage. In the published paper we are studying, the exact inclusion and exclusion criteria are set out. There were 421 cases and 615 controls spread across all five study sites. Matching cases and controls means that we choose certain characteristics uh, that are similar or matched in cases and controls. These matching factors can be risk factors. We must not match on the exposure of interest. If we do this, then we will find no difference in the exposure between the cases and the controls. We must also be careful not to overmatch because overmatching leads to the cases and controls being too similar. If we take AMD as an example, we might choose to match on age and gender. We know that age is a risk factor for the disease. We also know that more females than males get AMD. We might also want to match on race because we know that more Caucasians are affected by the disease than other races. Matching um, variables are risk factors for the disease and they can be confounders. Remember that confounders are factors that can mask the effect of the exposure of interest. Let's see how this study managed selection of the controls. How were the controls selected? Clinic coordinators screened the same sources of medical records of the same clinic as they had used for the cases. What were the inclusion and exclusion criteria? Residents of the local clinic area, aged 55 to 80, free from any of the five case diagnoses, no intraocular inflammatory disease, vasoproliferative retinopathy or pathological myopia. Were they matched to cases? Yes, by age, race and gender. The researchers collected similar information from both cases and controls in this study through an eye examination, a limited physical examination, a standardised questionnaire and blood for laboratory analysis. For the eye examination, researchers did not just rely on the clinic records, but followed strict diagnostic criteria to corroborate that cases had disease and controls were disease-free. Retinal photographs were taken of both eyes, in both cases and controls, and a subset of the cases and all the controls were reviewed at a central venue for quality assurance. It is very important to ensure that there are no individuals with disease amongst the controls, or disease-free individuals amongst the cases. If this does happen, it will affect the strength of any association seen between the disease and the exposure. The researchers measured exposure to AMD using three methods, a physical examination, laboratory measurements, standard questionnaire. The exposures must be accurately measured. The main association being investigated in the study was between cardiovascular risk factors and AMD, but other exposures, known and unknown risk factors, were also gathered. The researchers asked questions on exposures such as smoking and alcohol consumption. They measured height and weight using the physical examination and blood variables from the laboratory measurements. To obtain the best information, 
Those collecting the data should be masked or blinded to case control status. In this study, those analysing the laboratory samples did not know if a sample belonged to a case or a control. Masking prevents observer bias. If it is not done, differences may be found in values for the cases and controls. Ideally, the cases and controls should not be aware of the study hypothesis. This is to prevent cases being influenced in how they remember past events. This is called recall bias. As a final note, in all case control studies, it is very important to establish clear inclusion and exclusion criteria. The choice of cases and controls has to follow a detailed protocol all the way through. In summary, the advantages of case control studies are they are relatively cheap and quick to carry out, they can be used to investigate a wide range of risk factors, they're good for rare diseases, and they can be used to test a hypothesis. The disadvantages are, they are susceptible to selection and information bias. It is difficult to establish causality, that is, did the exposure come before the disease or vice versa? They are not suitable for investigating rare exposures.